Now, your Local 2 forecast first. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Martin. A beautiful day across the basin, seeing high 60s and even 70 in Pecos. But for MLK Day, it's going to get a little bit cooler. We're going to show you that later on. 37 by midnight, 31 by breakfast, and 48 by noon. Let's start Local 2 News right now. Next, bones discovered under a home in Odessa. Police calling in a specialist to test the remains. The details straight ahead. Also, a plane crash in Glasscock County kills a former Midland County Sheriff. We're learning more tonight. And I have a dream. Early celebrations underway for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We'll tell you how the locals honor Dr. King. Live from Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring, we're Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. This is Local 2 News at 10 in HD. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lauren Tropea. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday night with us for Local 2 News at 10. New tonight at 10, bones found underneath a home in Odessa leaves neighbors with questions. Odessa police called out to the 1400 block of 35th Street, where they tell us an electrician possibly discovered human remains. Officials calling in an anthropologist to run a few tests, learning they're not human remains, but those of an unknown animal. We're now learning more about a plane crash killing a former Midland County Sheriff. The crash happened here in Glasscock County, about 15 miles north of Garden City. Midland County Sheriff Gary Painter tells us former Sheriff Dallas Smith heading to a ranch in Glasscock County when he struck a mound of dirt, causing the plane to flip over. Smith, the only person on board, was pronounced dead at the scene. The crash being investigated by the Glasscock County Sheriff's Office, DPS, and the NTSB. Smith served as the Midland County Sheriff from January 1977 to 1984. A statewide election for the Court of Criminal Appeals comes to the basin. Republican candidate Judge Chris Oldner says the campaign trail both long and tiring, but enjoyable. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry appointed Oldner to the 416th Judicial District back in 2003, before he was elected judge of Collin County Court. Being the first time I've run statewide, I think it is a great opportunity to find those people who haven't had the, a chance to meet me and uh, be exposed to my qualifications. Oldner has served as a judge for 15 years. The country may be celebrating a special birthday tomorrow, but some locals around the basin getting an early start today for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Local 2's Lupi Zabathas visited with attendees of the annual gospel celebration in Odessa to remember Dr. King's legacy. Lupi was telling you just how much he enjoyed himself out there today, and he joins us live in the studio. Lupi? Lauren, you're right. I attended First Baptist Church in Odessa and had a lot of fun dancing to the gospel music. I spoke with locals who tell me the celebration is a time to remember everything Dr. King stood for. Without the dream for not only blacks, but whites, all other nationalities, we wouldn't be where we are today. At the First Baptist Church in Odessa, music moves locals during the annual gospel celebration all in honor of one man's dream. Event organizer Tommy Haynes tells me the goal to never forget Dr. King's legacy. We're having a celebration, which is we call our gospel celebration, which we put on every year around this time. And we, enjoy, we invite the community out to come and share this moment with us and uh, just, you know, have fun. With Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday approaching, Willie Mae Haynes says she remembers feeling united with equal rights supporters when Dr. King marched. Oh, it's always been special to me uh, when I first heard of him doing the march and everything. I know I couldn't be there, but it was special to me to always listen and look. Erlene Smith tells me in her mid-twenties, she saw the man with the dream as a hero that inspired her. I think it was a time that the young people suddenly realized they had to do something important, and they did. The importance of remembering what Dr. King stood for is something Haynes says should be celebrated every day. That's why it's important to uh, respect 
a dream that someone dreams because you never know where you might end up at. But I think his dream was a good dream for all mankind, not just only one race. This celebration was a kickoff to many that will take place and uh, to honor Dr. Martin Luther King tomorrow. For a full list of those events, you can visit our website at yourbasin.com. Live in the studio, Loopy Sabatha, Local 2 News. Thanks, Loopy. And over in Midland, robots and techies came together in the tall city this weekend as MISD hosted a robotics competition. Hundreds of students driving from as far as Alpine for a chance to place in the Area 18 event. Organizers say robotics is a great way for students to exercise their creativity while also setting a foundation for a career in science, technology, engineering, or math. Uh, been, I really want to be an engineer when I grow up. And I'm going to go to college and to be an engineer. If your child is interested in technology, engineering, and building and designing things, this is the thing they want to be involved with. It's a hands-on, immediate gratification if you want. On what Qualifiers earn their spot in the state match in Austin or Dallas in May. Two Odessa police officers speak out for the first time since getting shot while serving a warrant the day before Christmas Eve. Many celebrated their recovery at a special community-wide barbecue. The luncheon helped raise money for both officers and their families. It's overwhelming. It really is. You know, I, I just, I just get emotional thinking about it, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you all to, uh, to the community and. And, and our family. From, and that's from both of us. Yeah, absolutely. Workers' compensation covers their medical expenses, but money raised helps offset overtime opportunities that they will miss out on as they continue to recover. You might see a few cameras on your way to work this week. The Texas to the Texas Transportation Institute expected to set up more highway surveillance cameras. TxDOT tells us next week crews will install video cameras near 191 in the area of Billy Hext Road and Faudry. The cameras will record and collect data to help with future road projects. We're told it will not affect the traffic flow. Elsewhere in the basin, stiff rules surfacing courtside in Pecos County. Fans now required to pick a side when attending basketball games in the Fort Stockton District. According to the school's, school district's Facebook page, their UIL District Executive Committee now making home and away fans sit on separate sides of the court. Local 2's Tyler Wessner has the story. You might not know it, but when you go to a high school basketball game in District 24A, you have to pick a side, home or away. UIL actually suggests and recommends you to keep fans separate. And so we're just educating our parents, educating the community about remembering, you know, we have to keep people separate. Fort Stockton High School Principal Gilray Madrid referring to this Facebook post from the school district. It came after some issues popped up at other schools in their region. We've had issues in the past whenever uh, teams come and play playoffs here uh, because, again, that's very high emotional at that point and we we've had some fans kind of get a little unruly. The Panthers hosting the Pecos Eagles Friday night where Pecos resident Carlos Nichols came to watch his grandkids play. He says it comes down to parents just behaving properly. It's the parents that's got to take control also. They have to kind of settle down. I'm all right but sometimes you get real rowdy for nothing. Nichols tells me people need to remember this is just high school sports and it shouldn't be taken as seriously as it is by some people. It's just, it's just a kid sport. It's not pros or like the, you know it just for, for kids, you know, to have fun. There's some places that are, you know, kind of rowdy, but that's just part of the sports, I think. Tyler Wessner, Local 2 News. And staying in Fort Stockton tonight, a newly designated school zone now in place along one Fort Stockton roadway. We're told City Council approved the measure. The 10 mile an hour signs went up in the two and 300 blocks of Main Street, which sits near the Tiny Tots daycare. That daycare owner expressed her concerns about speeding in the area to us just last month. <laughs> In this week's Health Beat, new data shows women are waiting longer to become mothers. The CDC says it's been rising for the last 15 years. Local 2's Rebecca Jeffrey reports. The average age of women having their first child has risen to 26. That's the word from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Back in 2000, it was just under 25 years old, but 2014, it had risen to 26. Researchers say this is partly because there are fewer mothers under the age of 20. In fact, the teen birth rate has hit an all-time low. 
Economic factors also play a role, with an increased number of women putting off motherhood for higher education or a career. This also has ramifications for the U.S. population. Having children later in life means fewer childbearing years and therefore fewer children. One area of concern, doctors say older women having children increases a mother's risk of complications like gestational diabetes and passing on genetic defects. For Local 2 News, I'm Rebecca Jeffrey. A historic weekend as some key economic sanctions on Iran were lifted. This as several Americans detained in Iran finally make their way back home. Karen Kaifa reports. The nuclear deal was never intended to resolve all of our differences with Iran, but still engaging directly with the Iranian government on a sustained basis for the first time in decades has created a unique opportunity, a window to try to resolve important issues. President Obama on Sunday hailed the powers of diplomacy in dealing with Iran and its nuclear ambitions. Years of isolation may now be a thing of the past as some crippling sanctions against Iran were lifted. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani said the deal, in exchange for checks on its nuclear program, was a tool for the progress, growth and development of the country. Today is a historic day, an exceptional day as well in the political and economic history of uh, the nation of Iran. Saturday, Secretary of State John Kerry met with Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif in Vienna after a U.N. agency verified Iran had completed the necessary steps to restrict its nuclear program. And just after that meeting, U.S. officials confirmed that Iran has freed five American prisoners, detained in separate cases, some as early as 2011. Four were part of an exchange, including Washington Post journalist Jason Rezaian, charged with espionage in December 2014, following five months in detention. The plane carrying the Americans one step closer to reaching U.S. soil. And to my fellow Americans, today we're united in welcoming home sons and husbands and brothers who in lonely prison cells have endured an absolute nightmare. I'm Karen Kafa. Coming up, a 1,200-mile trip for cancer treatment ends with a welcome home party in Andrews. We're there for the surprise straight ahead. And your weather headlines getting ready to look at some cooling for NLK Day along with some calmer winds. And looking down the road, we could see some 70s next weekend. Find out more in your full forecast right after this. Okay, so Ryan and I can chat, or Jay and I can chat. Now, your local 2 weather authority forecast. All 
Taylor Ray, Ryan Martin joining us now to talk a little weather. So did you catch the Broncos Steelers game earlier? Really oh early? yes, we're expecting cool temperatures in the for cooler temperatures for MLK Day, just like the Steelers offense was today, a little too cool oh, to keep up with the Denver Broncos offense. Steelers hater over here. A little bit. So am I, I can't judge. Lifelong Ravens fan, not much of a Steelers fan. So happy the Broncos won, me too. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Let's pull up the Almanac right now. We're actually below average in terms of our high, or I'm sorry, above average in terms of our highs and above average in terms of our lows. Only two degrees above for the low, but well above the high, which is the average of 57 degrees normally. Right now, though, going to be a pretty cool night again in the basin, but right now only 41 de degrees, so really not that bad, but it feels more like 34, so it feels like it's flirting with that freezing line. Uh, 13 mile per hour wind speeds right now across the basin, so a pretty windy night ahead of us as well, but that's not going to stick around. We'll get to that in a minute. After we get to the temperatures, going to be seeing uh, 40 37 right now in Wink, 34 in Hobbs, but Carlsbad, this is pretty uh, rare, 42 degrees and 46 degrees in Pecos, down at the bottom of the trend, Pecos, 52 in the Big Bend and 52 in Presidio, so feeling more like daytime over there, not looking like a cool night, and the wind chill not having any effect on them either, still 52 in Presidio and the Big Bend, but Carlsbad getting their temperature dropped down a little bit to 37 and down to 29 degrees in Hobbs is what it feels like right now. Hour by hour, these temperatures only going to get cooler. Uh, as compared to what we saw today during the, tomorrow, seeing those 50s, so really not that bad though, but still not like yesterday when we saw 60s and even saw 70s in Pecos. And then, but Tuesday though, going to be seeing these temperatures get back up where it's not going to hit 70 until this weekend in Odessa Midland, but wink 70 degrees expected for Tuesday, 71 in Pecos, and then could see 72 in Fort Stockton. So, a pretty exciting Tuesday ahead of us, but a little bit cooler on MLK Day. Uh, up in the Panhandle, 30 degrees right now, 20 degrees up in Amarillo, uh, 49 in Corpus Christi, 49 in Brownsville, and then 45 in Houston. So East Texas, not what we're accustomed to seeing. Uh, they're going to be having a cold front moving through there in a couple of days. But right now, satellite radar seeing um, a little bit of clouds across Texas, some clouds in the Houston area, and also seeing some clouds to the north of, of us. But right now in the Permian Basin, not too many clouds to worry about. Going to be on and off throughout the night, and we're not going to be seeing too much in terms of humidity either. Pretty low for this time of night. And wind right now, a little windy in several areas, 10 in Odessa Midland and then 11 in Carlsbad. But Guadalupe Pass, actually pretty calm for them, only at 10 miles an hour. And these winds are going to die down greatly tomorrow, seeing a lot of zeros across the basin. And then those winds are going to start to pick back up when we get later into Tuesday. You can see, going to be seeing a couple of 13s in Odessa Midland, 11 up in Seminole, and then 15 in Hobbs. And as we said, wind was a big deal today. You can see the wind gusts seeing 30 in Wink, 22 in Fort Stockton, 31 in Alpine, and 27 down in the Big Bend Mountains. Let's get to your regional forecast for tonight. Going to be a relatively cool night here. Going to be seeing the temperatures in the 30s, but the only area getting below 30 will be Tatum tonight with a low of 27 degrees. Tomorrow, Lovington can get back up to 58 degrees. Could be seeing 60s in Jowl, but the rest of the area mainly going to be seeing high 40s tomorrow. And then tonight in the Central Basin, going to be seeing 41 possibly in Cope Ranch. Mainly going to be seeing high 30s though across the Central Basin. Tomorrow though could get pretty warm. Penwell could get up to 60 degrees. Grand Falls 60. Two, uh, 50 in Big Lake only, 48 in Garden City, and then 49 in Odessa for a high. And then going into the trans Pecos, it's going to be seeing 40s and high 30s tonight. Uh, not much diversity there, but tomorrow uh, could get up to 64 in Sanderson and all the way up to 67 in Dryden, 62 in Sheffield, Ira Ann, 62, Bakersfield, 63 degrees. The rest of the area seeing 50s. And then grounding out the rest of the trans Pecos for tonight, seeing 40s and high 30s and a couple low 30s as well. And then tomorrow could be seeing 65 in Brewster, 65 in Marathon, and uh, Presidio could get up to 60, and Valentin also 62 degrees for a high tomorrow. Rounding out the seven day forecast, look what we got in the next couple days. A cooler MLK day, but that's not gonna last. The temperatures are gonna start to pick back up 65 by Tuesday, 71 expected for a high on Saturday, and 73 on Sunday. So we got some springtime temperatures in our forecast in the next couple of days. Gonna that sounds nice. nice. You know what, Ren? I've always wanted to move to the Windy City, but after getting a taste of the wind out here, mm -hmm. I think I've changed my mind. A little it's, bit. This is really gusty out there today. But what's also heating up? Cardinals, baby. Oh, yes. I know yes. you're excited. Very excited. Wore my red last night, so mm -hmm. thought I'd switch things up. But.
Can't wait. Can't Absolutely. wait to see them take on the Panthers. All right, thanks, Ryan. Still to come here at 10, a couple close to setting a record for the longest marriage ever recorded. Find out more coming up. Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. You're watching Local 2 News at 10 in HD. One boy battling cancer returns home after treatment to find the entire Andrews community welcoming him back with open arms. Local 2's Jenna Sands was there for the surprise and she brings us the story. A police escort and a sea of familiar faces welcomed home Gage Klein. Just glad he's home and thank God. Thank God. He's been battling Farconi anemia, a rare blood disease that can lead to bone marrow failure and cancer. Gage and his parents have been in Minneapolis, Minnesota for three months while undergoing chemo, radiation, and a stem cell transplant. His mom says it has been a long journey, but they know there is light at the end of treatment. But as soon as we got closer to the end of the transplant, his attitude completely changed. He's ready to get home. He's ready to get back on that bike and he's ready to start his new life. Nicole Brown's son has been best friends with Gage since kindergarten and she says the anticipation for Gage's return was almost unbearable. On pins and needles, could hardly sleep. I mean, just on the edge, you know. I was a few minutes late picking him up from school and he's like, Mom, where are you at, where are you at? You know, he's ready, just ready to see him. So much support. I'm just, I'm beside myself at all the support from day one. And, and our struggle is not over, but we will continue to fight. Though there is no cure for Gage's illness, the treatment is projected to extend his life expectancy. Gage is ready to get back into the swing of things with the community's unconditional support and his family's will to endure. Now our plan is to keep moving forward, um, start this new life that that Gage deserves. That is a wonderful story right there, Jay. You know what else is wonderful? What? Seeing the Arizona Cardinals advance to the <laughs> NFC Championship. Yes, we were excited about that in the newsroom. I think everybody was thinking we were yeah. crazy when it was going on. Oh, but I was losing my voice last night. <laughs> Try to Can give it up. It now, yes. But <laughs> also, also, we received some good news, too, hearing that one of our athletes is deciding to play at the next level on Twitter, and he follows you, too, right? Yeah, I think he does follow me, yeah. Pretty popular <laughs> guy. Coming up next in your local two sports, one of our defensive ends announced through Twitter where he's committing to play college ball. I'll let you know who and where next. 
Know of a community event or news story? Then contact us. You can call 432-563-4421. Email news at kmid.tv. Like us on Facebook at local2news-kmid. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at local2news-kmid. Now, your Local 2 Sports with Jay Russell. Welcome into your Local 2 Sports. I'm Jay Russell. Now, opposing the offenses knew they had to go up against a big guy when they played the Midland High Bulldogs, and they must find a way to stop him on the line. As his name is Tra Trevor William. During his senior year, he had 59 tackles, 20 tackles for a loss, and seven sacks. Plus, he was named to the All-State Honorable Mention Team. Number nine announced on Twitter that he committed to Georgia Southern. Now, through a text, he told me, quote, there's a winning tradition and high expectations. The town is built around the college and not the college built into Statesboro. The academics are a big part of the player's life and success on the field comes along with that, unquote. Now, talking NFL, Cam Newton and the Panthers hosting Russell Wilson and the Seahawks in the playoffs. Jonathan Stewart rushes up the middle into the end zone for the touchdown. They go up seven to zero and Stewart gives the ball to an excited little girl. Now Wilson is forced out of the pocket, scrambles, floats it all the way to his man. Jermaine Curse in the back of the end zone for the touchdown, 31-21 Panthers. Cam doesn't like that. Now last chance for the Seahawks. Onside kick attempt. It's recovered by Thomas Davis. Panthers win 31-24. Now they'll have to play the high flying Arizona Cardinals next Sunday in the NFC Championship game. Now after the game, Cam Newton spoke about how his team let the Seahawks back into the game. It's just a tale of, of execution. You know, we need a little bit more of that in the second half. Uh, there's a lot of guys, you know, playing with their bus tight. Coaches with their bus tight. Yeah, at one point, fans and myself was butt tight too. Sound by Cam knows that you got to play real good football against these guys. Now over to the AFC, Peyton Manning and the Broncos hosting Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. The Steelers showed some trickery early on. Martavis Bryant on the reverse. He goes up the sidelines, 40-yard gain, and the defense was just on its heels. Now, a couple of plays later, Fitzgerald Toussaint right up the middle for the one-yard touchdown. Steelers up 7-6. to six. Gotta love those dance moves, too. Fourth quarter, Steelers have one more chance. Under two minutes left, Roethlisberger under pressure. DeMarcus Ware brings him down. The Broncos advance to the AFC Championship game. They win 23 to 16, and Manning was pleased with the defensive effort. They've been playing really well. 
for the past uh, number of weeks and not given up many points. So uh, real credit to them. And uh, you know, we had some good field position early and uh, they had to set up for, we had to set up for field goals. But next week they need touchdowns, a lot of them, because the Patriots will come ready to play. Now speaking hu hoops, a huge showdown is the Texas uh, team showed down the Mavs and the Spurs and the Spurs were trying to extend their 10 game winning streak against the Mavs and the game was easy work for coach pop and the boys in this one. LaMarcus Aldridge scored 23 points. San Antonio wins 112 to 83. Now sticking with basketball, the Red Raiders had a heartbreaking loss on Saturday night. Lester Medford drilled a three as time expires. Bears won 63 to 60. A tech head coach, Tubby Smith, spoke after the game about the play of the Baylor Bears. I thought he did a good job there. They're a very well-rounded team, very deep team. And they have a, a lot of weapons, a lot of people that can make shots. You know, you, you look at their, their box scores. The Red Raiders won 10 but lost their last three games. They play TCU on Monday, and hopefully they can get back into the driver's seat. So Jay, just a couple of things. I really thought the Arizona Cardinals would be going into the championship playing the Seahawks. I was really surprised. You know what? It was going to be a win-win for both of us because the Seahawks just recently beat the Cardinals. Then last year in the playoffs, the Panthers won. So I'm pretty excited because we need some revenge. This is I know. the best place to do it. I'm excited. I can't wait. It's gonna, gonna wear red again? Game. Should we oh, do that? Yeah, we're definitely wearing red. And we'll have a new dance next week. New dance and red. And we just also, I want to say congratulations to Traver to 59 tackles. Yeah, that's a lot in the season. This guy's just amazing. That's awesome. All right, well, we'll be right back after this. All right, getting one last look at your seven day forecast. Going to be a little bit cooler on Martin Luther yeah. King Day, but those temperatures are going to pick back up and we could be seeing a possible chance of 70s this weekend. Nicholas and Rafaela Ordaz have celebrated their 82nd wedding anniversary. The entire family was there to mark the occasion from their kids to their grand grand grandkids. <laughs> Mr. Ordaz also turned 102 on Friday. The couple have some advice about how to make a marriage last. They say the secret is in respect, affection, and not sweating the small stuff. The Ordaz family is not too far from setting a record for the longest marriage ever recorded. That's incredible. I love that it 
their, their advice right there. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, that seems like true love right there. I mean, that long too? I think we all <laughs> need to amazing. take some notes. Yeah, I That's know. perfect with Valentine's Day right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is around the corner. I need, it, oh. I need a Valentine too. I'm just putting it out there, so. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, really quickly, championship predictions. Cardinals, Broncos. Cam, Newton. Oh, you've been waiting all day to do that. Cardinals for me.